Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa of Lisa Boone Designs where I paint furniture and I also stock amazing products that are zero VOC or just fun products for crafting or for furniture flipping that you can use and you can purchase them on my website. All the links are in the description, but today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how I painted this chest white. This chest is from one of my clients. I previously did the picture over here. There's a video on my YouTube channel. We put those in her grandson's room and took this one out and it was going to her other son's house. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and clean the piece really well. I would love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your questions are or what you think about this project. I love painting furniture and I love showing how to do it. Painting white is not my favorite, but it really can be easy. It just depends on the piece of furniture, what you're painting, what the varnish is, what the wood type is even on how you will paint it. The first thing is first and you really need to clean it really well. I love to clean with vinegar, water, and Blue Dawn. I didn't have some made up so I just grabbed my crud cutter but I always use a microfiber cloth because it really helps clean the pieces really well. Now on my, when I was cleaning it, when I first saw it, my naked eye, I could not see this gut until after I cleaned it. And let me tell you, I spent quite a bit of time trying to get this residue off of the chest. At first, I thought it was just on that one section. I kept scrubbing and scrubbing and see the nubs of the microfiber, it really does help to just grip the dirt and the residue and of whatever's on there and get it clean. And you can usually clean your furniture just with water. Next, I decided to take a sanding sponge and just sand it a little bit and see if I could get it off. I'm glad I did that because I discovered that this residue was all over the piece and that residue, that stickiness could have really had my paint fail so I just grabbed my sanding sponge and I kept going and you can see that stickiness on the back of that sponge I finally got it all off and I went ahead and I rinsed it with vinegar and water 50 50 and again another microfiber cloth but this piece had this um, area here on the top where I had collected lots of dirt and gunk over the years so I just scraped it off. If you have any questions feel free to ask me. You can contact me on any of the social media platforms or comment below on this video. You can also hit me up on my website lisaboondesigns.com. All of the details are in the description, all of the links for all of the products. You can purchase them on my website. Again, it's lisaboondesigns.com. Thank you so much for all of your kindness, your support. If you have any questions, I'd love to help you with any of your painting problems or issues, concerns, or maybe you're new to DIY paint and there is definitely a learning curve. So let me know what your issues are and I would love to help you. Today, we're gonna to be using DIY paint products. DIY Paint has five different whites. My preference is vintage linen for a nice bright white color. I'm also gonna be using the Klingon F40 to get it done. DIY Paint is a clay-based chalk style paint, so it's very thick. And because of the clay, it will adhere to almost anything and also because of the chalk that's in it. There are so many things that I love about DIY Paint and one of them is its versatility. And the other thing is that it covers pretty much anything and everything. And even if it's a dark piece of furniture or even if something that's been painted before, even if I'm painting it in white, it will cover. I've only ever had to do two coats to have total full coverage. I like to use an artist brush to get it 
into the little crevices and I use a little bit of water to get it nice and smooth. Now you notice I cleaned it and I painted it. I did not have to prime. This piece was in good condition and it was relatively clean. Pieces that have a lot of oil or a red varnish or, or if you're painting directly onto raw wood that's a red tone or mahogany or anything like that, you're going to have to prime. I prefer to prime using shellac. Thankfully, this piece was really easy. I painted it on my first coat and my second coat, I like to use a fine mist sprayer to spread that second coat. It reactivates that first layer and it allows the paint to just glide on. And it glides on even smoother because I'm using a synthetic brush. If you want texture, use a natural bristle brush. I just love the Klingon brushes. Now DIY Paint is going to be coming out with brand new brushes that are supposed to be amazing and soft. They are coming very soon. The one other thing that I love about DIY Paint is the versatility I said earlier. And that means that I can water down my paint to get nice smooth consistency and it also helps the paint to just go that extra mile, get a bigger bang for my buck, and just spread that paint evenly. And because I was running low on my can, I added some water for my second coat, and I was able to get full coverage, even though I watered it down. Now here's a little hack. I like to use a cardboard box, and I cut it up, and I will make holes in it and put my hardware in there. Now this piece had a lot of hardware. We had toyed with changing it, but that's a lot of hardware. So we just painted it, and it's a lot easier to do with two hands. <laughs> but I got it done, two coats. Next, after I have it all nice and painted, I like to take a sanding sponge and here I'm just going to remove any dust or anything that fell on it, any kind of bumps that are on it. I really wanted a smooth to the touch surface. I don't always do that. But here's something that you need to know. When you sand DIY paint, it will burnish it and you will really pick up on the highs and lows. So even though you're only using one color, you get some dimension and some interest when you sand it. You can also use brown paper bag or packaging paper. I have done that before in other tutorials and it just helps to just make it nice and smooth. But I wanted to lightly distress it. Distressing it gives it interest. There's some raised paneling. If you paint something in one solid color, you will not see the details. You will not see the intricacies of the piece and so I prefer to always distress plus it takes away that pressure of it has to be perfect um, I'm just not one of those girls I think only the father in heaven is perfect and we are not and there's not anything that we can do that is perfect so I like to see the interest it warms it up to me and it just makes it just so much prettier now when you're sanding, there is a lot of dust that will come from DIY paint and that is because there's that chalky consistency. And when you, when you sand it, it's going to get everywhere. So you really want to make sure you do a good job of cleaning it down. The best thing to use is a tack cloth because it will pick up every little piece of residue before you seal it. DIY paint has nothing in it. It is absolutely clean. So you do have to seal it and you can seal it with wax or with a poly type top coat. Usually I use DIY Big Top or DIY Paints Clear Wax. I love all of the opportunities to seal with these products because they're just amazing and they're safe for the environment. So now you can see this is what it looks like after it's been sanded. And even though I can see some texture with the brush, that doesn't bother me. I hand painted it. I don't mind that. Um, I don't want a factory finish, but I do want it 
to look beautiful and if you touch it, it's smooth to the touch because I sanded it. So to seal it here, I'm using Sweet Pickens top coat that is called Final Finish. I'm using the satin and I'm using the F40. Typically, I like to seal my poly um, coats in with a blue sponge. I have those available on my website. It makes it really fast and easy and I love to use that. But because of all of the raised paneling, I decided to use my brush. Either way works. I did two coats. Now Sweet Pickens Top Coat likes for you to wait four hours in between coats. It is not 100% natural. It is an acrylic base, but it is zero VOC and it is safe for all of my critters and for me in my house. There's no fumes, there's no odor, and it is a scratch resistant top coat. I love it. Here's what the before looked like. And now here is the after. I love it. And I've said this before, white is absolutely not my favorite, but I love the way that it turned out. I think it's very beautiful and it looks like it would be an amazing piece to any nursery. Slightly distressed, but so beautiful and so smooth and it just is warm. Even though it's white, it's warm because it's been distressed. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece. If you have any questions about DIY paint or anything that I've done or something that you're struggling with, please comment below and let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for sharing and commenting, contacting me. I love to hear from you. Thank you so much. I hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Ciao.